Okay, if everybody would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment, a very brief moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Okay, so hold on, I'm trying to put my agenda. And I don't know where it went. You also just got rid of yourself on camera, so. <laughs> Did I? Uh, yeah. the, the only agenda item is to the, do the presentation, so. Okay, so um, if you wanna go ahead and bring up the, um, the, the deck mic, I can go through it. Okay, you should everybody. be able to should be able to see the screen now. Yep, I, I will tell you when I can't switch. So you know, I'll tell you when to go next. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, the chair's uh, annual budget presentation for the 2021 2022 budget this year. Go ahead, Mike. So the first thing that I wanted to kind of talk about tonight was um, the budget goals, the goals that the council had. Um, when reviewing this budget. So um, the intent was to put forward a budget that addresses our community needs, maintains all services as provided in the adopted Board of Education budget and the town proposed budget, uh, utilize the funds available from current fiscal year to pre-purchase items from next year's budget and reduce our full year 21-22 spend, and then continue with a reduced usage of the unallocated general fund to incorporate increases in expenditures from last year and shortages in revenues from grants for this year. So um, there are prior presentations by the town manager that show a breakdown of revenues and expenses and percentage of totals. Um, there have been presentations about the capital plan and the debt plan, presentations on the proposed budget and its iterations. Um, what we're gonna re review tonight is what the town council has put forward and um, how this budget meets the town goals. Um, one very important thing that I always try to balance and this town council has done a good job of trying to balance is community needs is a very wide thing. Um, so community needs being met includes um, what we've received from budget requests from our, um, our leaders, our, our people in charge between the superintendent, the board of ed, the town manager's office and all of the offices underneath them and also what people can afford to pay. Um, so that's one of the balancing items and community needs is um, being able to keep our town affordable. Go ahead, Mike. So this budget as put together um, meets the community needs in the sense that um, a main goal of the council was to pass a budget that maintained the current services and addressed any known gaps in a fiscally responsible budget. Um, in order to do that, we have to recognize the increase would be a combination of the expense increase from last budget and the current expense increase this year. So even though we had a zero mill rate last year, as I talked about in my last year presentation, we did have an, ex an expense increase. Um, we also needed, we had to address the needed resources and address known shortfalls that we had in the budget. And the, uh, the last factor here was that we had to slowly walk down the utilization of the fund balance that we used last year, which was um, $630,000. I think it's the highest amount we'd ever planned to use from um, a budget. So walking that down to a more uh, manageable number that we can spread out and continue that walk down over the next couple of years. So um, let's see. All of this is being accomplished by both the town and the school side of the budget utilizing funds that are left at the end of this year in a productive manner to offset future costs. Um, we'll also be utilizing the funds received from the federal government and the American Rescue Plan where we can in relation to expenses that are COVID related that should not be part of our overall ongoing budget. Um, and again, you know, the we are continuing to use fund balance to kind of meet that need. And I will do a quick review again, further in the presentation of how the fund balance works. Go ahead, Mike. 
So the town council budget that we're presenting maintains all services as presented in the Board of Education approved budget and the town manager's proposed budget. Um, no services are being cut for the residents um, in these two proposed budgets. We actually have an addition of a grant writer slash project manager position and several new Board of ed Education um, positions. There are no staff reductions and no cuts in any programs. Um, and it also includes the one community-wide bulky waste pickup that's included in our taxes already that happens in the fall. So this new grant position, um, first and foremost, it will free up our resources, our resources to do more for the town. Where we've had several people over, the, over several departments in the past working on finding, securing, and administering grants, we'll now have one person to coordinate and handle that for the town. Um, that means the time that those individuals were spending on grants can now be refocused on meeting the needs of the community in their respective areas. Um, this was a big consideration of our human resources area and being able to have those employees be able to dedicate themselves to human resource to the human resources needs of our town. On the school side of the budget, um, after the last Board of Education meeting, it was confirmed that all of the resources that Dr. Willett had put in his original budget are staying there even after the reductions that the town council suggested. So they will be looking at include, it includes a speech and language supports person, um, a part-time teacher for English language learners, an applied behavioral analyst and an interventional intervention specialist, the continuation of a school counselor, a new social worker, the changing of an existing employee to a chief personnel officer to assist the superintendent. And um, I believe last time I checked with the, uh, the finance chair over there, they are still including the assistant for that CPO in their budget. Go ahead, Mike. So this is the numbers as uh, we see them. You see the prior year's budget in here at 57.182 million and this year's budget at 58.215. It's an increase of $1.032 million and a 1.81% increase in total. Um, you can see that there's a 1.9% increase in government, 2% um, increase in Board of Ed, capital improvements is going down by $54,000, which isn't a lot, but then it jumps to 28% because it's such a small number to start with. And then debt service is on a steady uh, increasing path for the next few years at a 1.09% increase. Go ahead, Mike. So I'd like to go over this slide because the general fund is always something that gets bopped around like a political football. So I wanted to make sure that we are once again looking at what the general fund is and how it is used. So the general fund usage is a balancing entry. Right now in this budget, we have expenses of $58,214,882. We have projected revenues at $57,754,882, which means at this time, we would be looking for usage of the fund or the tax stabilization account in the amount of $460,000. That is our balancing entry. Um, the balancing entry is an assumption and it changes within the variables of expenses and revenues throughout the year. So if we have less expenses, we use less of the fund. If we have more revenues, we use less of the fund. If we have an emergency happen and we need additional expenses, we would use more. And if we had a severe drop in our revenue, we would have to use more. At this time, we're projecting a $460,000 use of the fund to balance our entry with the anticipation that we will hopefully find savings throughout the year and not have to tap it for that big of an amount. Go ahead, Mike. So the general unassigned fund usage. For the 2021 fiscal year, we originally planned to use $500,000 of the fund. Um, then we approved usage of $400,000 for the fire truck purchase. $284,000 for the Board of Ed COVID fund. And then just the other night, we approved an additional $213,000 for the Board of Ed 1% fund. That means for last year, our total planned usage or projected usage, I should say the plan is 500,000. The projected 
is $1,396,139. One hundred one dollars sorry. For the fiscal year 2021, at the last time that I did this, these numbers are always moving, but at the last time that I did it, the town was an anticipating spending $226,589 less than planned. So we had fewer expenses by that $226,889. We're also estimating that we will receive $181,223 more in revenue um, than we planned. So for the expenses, we're spending less the biggest piece of that is mainly due to the resident state trooper contract and changes and also attrition of our staff throughout the year and savings that we're able to use um, by having those open positions. And then there are a few other small items. Um, revenue is driven by several things, including um, an increase in licenses and permits. Um, COVID projects were a very real thing and we got to see more licenses and permits coming in. And then there were charges for services. So instead of using the anticipated 1.4 million, as we expected at the time of me putting this together, we were anticipating using 989,000 of the money, which meant that we are using $408,000 less than we planned. So this is a good thing. It means that if things stay on course like this, we would not be taking out that original $500,000 of the fund. We'd only be taking $92,000 out of the fund. Go ahead, Mike. Our debt plan, um, the current budget reflects an increase of debt spending at about $50,000. In 22, 23, that spending is going to increase by another $50,000. Um, included in this plan is the slated increase for Birch Grove and also the assumption that the referendum for $5 million for the fire station renovations on stations 140, 340, and 440 will pass. So our debt plan would include both of those items um, and it will continue to increase for the next four years before it begins to drop back down to the current level in 2028. At that point, other things will be falling off and we'll get back down to the level that we're at now. And then we will maintain that level short of adding anything else to it going forward. Go ahead, Mike. So at this time, the things that we have to focus on here is staying the course. This budget reflects the town's priorities. It gives a 2% increase to the Board of Ed. It gives an increase to the town side and a much needed position to handle grants and projects to free up other staff. It maintains all the services that we currently have. Um, we're using the end of year dollars that we have left this year as much as we can to remediate increases and we're taking the residents into consideration by doing that. We need to continue to be fiscally conservative to ensure we're saving where possible so we can adapt to any changes that may come and make town affordable for all 15,000 of its residents. Based on the last Board of Ed meeting, there will be dollars available to add to the um, town council established COVID-19 fund for the Board of Education if they stay on course with their spending as is Right now, they're looking at about a million dollars left at the end of the year. And um, after all of their items are accounted for pre-purchasing to account for the dollars that were removed from the budget, I believe the number is around between 80 and $90,000 that they're thinking they'll have left at the end of the year, which they would like to split between their 1% fund and the COVID-19 fund. Um, this, along with the ESSER three funds, that are gonna be coming from the federal government, which last time I checked were around half a million dollars. This will give the Board of Ed maneuverability to adjust to the meeting, to adjust and meet the needs of our students, especially with anything regarding um, COVID, COVID related expenses. We don't know what next year is gonna bring in terms of COVID or the response that we're gonna to have to have to it. We do have the advantage of having successfully navigated the current or continuing to successfully navigate the, the current epidemic. We, we are still able to provide all of our town services to our residents with the exception of the senior center, which we're working on, right, Mike? <laughs> See that smiling yes. face. <laughs> we're very quickly, we very quickly put in place an education plan for the students and we regularly reached out to our most vulnerable citizens. Well, we will have the tools in place to go back to our, um, 
EOC regular calls and we'll have the staff ready to maneuver if we have to go back to a work at home environment. We have a bank of volunteers to help coordinate our response. We'll be able to do all of these things quickly. Um, so we're, we're doing what we needed to do. We're gonna continue to do what we're needing to do. We're looking for the most optimal way to get the best bang for the dollars for the, ta for the taxpayers. And um, we hope that overall they find the budget acceptable. Go ahead, Mike. So beyond just the numbers and the budget, you know, I feel like we always say these things and they're kind of just route now, but you know, Tolland is truly an amazing town. We have staff who really cares about their jobs in the community. We have neighbors who are always willing to help. We have excellent services and we have fiscally responsible leaders. We're best when we consider the needs of everyone. We're best when we bring forward ideas and when we look for ways to help. So thank you, Talon. I'm grateful to be here. And if anybody has any questions, um, we can go through those now. If you're on a device and you wanna raise your hand under the participants tab, um, I will call on you and you'll need to state your name and address for the record. If you are on a phone, it is star nine um, and the same applies. I don't see anybody raising their hand. Oh, okay. Um, oh, Mike, I, where's my participation list? Uh, should be on the bottom uh, of the screen. Katie Murray. I'm on my iPad, so it's smaller. Um, Katie Murray. Katie Murray, 8 Lisa Lane. Um, I was looking for uh, some top line points on why we should support this budget, please. Okay, top line points back to the beginning here. It addresses the community's needs. It maintains the services for the adopted Board of Education budget. It is taken into account money that we have left at the end of this year to help reduce the expenses for next year. And it doesn't cut any services. Thank you, uh, Chairman, Chairwoman um, Nuccio. Um, who assessed the needs of the community that this budget meets? Well, that would have been um, the Board of Ed who put forward their budget and the town, the town manager who put forward his budget and then the town council who reviewed all of it. Excellent. Could we see a copy of that uh, community needs assessment, please? There are meetings and minutes that you can go back and review to um, look at everything that we did in all of the meetings. Yes, ma'am, I did attend or watch those meetings afterwards and read the minutes. I was looking for a document that is a needs assessment for our community. That does not exist in a simple document form. As I said, you'd have to go back and watch the meetings and look at all the discussions and through the minutes and that's where all of that happened so the needs of our community are only assessed during uh public town council meetings regarding the count regarding the budget well there were board of ed meetings also if you wanted to go back and look at those um but yes we tend to do all of our business in public yes ma'am i i um I apologize, my uh, point wasn't that the meetings were done in private. Um, the point, what my point was uh, that a, a volunteer group of town councilors for whom I have a lot of respect and gratitude for your public uh, service um, are able to evaluate the needs of a community of approximately 15,000 people in 15, maybe 20 meetings. Is that correct, ma'am? I think that we do a good job doing that, yes, but um, I'm not sure if you're looking for something specific, Katie, if you, we, nobody ever, as far as I know, on any of the boards or commissions have sat down and created a, a 
document for how they do the budget as far as I know. So um, I'm not quite sure I'm understanding what it exactly it is you're asking. Yes, I'm asking how do you, uh, I'm questioning the statement that this budget addresses the community needs if we cannot articulate what those needs are. I, okay, maybe we can have this conversation offline if you'd like, but I think, as I said, you know, the Board of Ed had community meetings. They had uh, multiple meetings reviewing their budget, which took care of their side of things. Town manager has meetings with all of his staff, and then all of that gets presented to the town council, who it's our charter-driven responsibility to sit down and look at that and come up with what the budget should be, and that's exactly what we did do. In reviewing all of that information, that's what we did. Yes, I, um, I appreciate your offering to have an offline meeting, although I um, would respectfully decline that as I, as you just pointed out, would want to have this conversation in a public venue, um, which is what uh, this uh, meeting I think is all about, um, to discuss the budget. And I am questioning the first, um, the first part of your earlier statement where you said this budget addresses the community needs. Um, mm -hmm. I reiterate my question or state again my question, what are those needs of our community? And if they are not articulated um, anywhere, how can you claim to meet the needs of our community without knowing what those needs are? So, okay. I'm going to try to say this in a way that maybe it makes more sense, but according to what we have, we have, are adding a grant position, which facilitates community need because it frees up our human resources director and other people to then do more work for the community rather than just looking at all the grants that are spread out over multiple people. We are also looking at the addition of speech and language supports, part-time teacher for English language learners, applied benefit analysis and intervention specialists. Um, let's see, continuation of a school counselor, a new social worker, changing of an existing employee to a chief personnel officer, to assist a superintendent, an assistant for that CPO. So all of those were put forward as community needs. And this budget is meeting all of those. Thank you for reiterating that. Um, I did hear you say all that. And of course, I've, I've read all that information too. Um, I wonder, going back to my point, uh, are there needs in our community that are not met by this budget? Mm, there may be some in individual needs, but I think overall the community needs are being met by the budgets that are put forward. So I don't think you and I are gonna get to a spot of me saying what you want me to say or me being able to answer your question in this. My answer is I believe the budget as put forward by the town council meets the needs as expressed from the board of education and the town manager and all the other departments as they saw fit for um, consideration in the town council has met that with the budget that they are putting forward. Okay, um, can you, I'm sorry, just for clarification purposes, um, are we still on, uh, are we on the public input portion of this agenda or um, are we still on the budget presentation? The budget presentation is over. So we're on public input? Correct. Thank you. Um, I am wondering then uh, about your, um, your split role. Uh, right now, the legislature is in session. Uh, there is a vote mm -hmm. in place. Uh, I can see you haven't voted actually um, to the vote that's taking place right now. And you are also chairing this town council meeting. Yes, I am. Can you please talk to me about how you can do both of those things, uh, giving our town the appropriate representation at the same time? 
No, Katie, not in this meeting. This is a special meeting about the budget, not about my holding two offices. So at another time, if you'd like to ask that question, we can sit down and have that, but it's no different than any other town that has a split person on town council or in the legislature. The fact that it's targeted at me says more about what you're asking than me. So as you can see, I have not voted on the thing that is on there right now. I will cast my vote after, which is not relevant to this conversation with the budget. So unless you don't have any other budget questions, I think we're good to move on. Actually, um, I do have a few other questions and I, I would um, point out that the agenda for tonight says that there's public participation. It does not limit the public participation to the budget. Um, it just simply says public participation. And as a uh, elector in uh, our community, I, I welcome the opportunity that you have given me uh, to do public participation tonight. Um, but I do not have this any is a questions. special meeting, though. So that means you are limited to the items that are on the budget. I mean, on the agenda. Is that correct, Mike, as a special meeting? Um, so it is a special meeting, but public participation is just listed on the agenda. So um, I mean, it, as any time, you know, it's not a public hearing. So the chair always has the right to hear from the public as the chair sees fit. So um, you can choose whether or not to answer questions that aren't budget related. I'm keeping this to the budget at this time, please. Okay. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about the bulk pickup portion of this agenda, uh, this budget? Uh, can you tell us about that, please? Um, what would you like to know? What happens in the fall? It's the same that it's been happening for several years and it's still included. Okay. Um, in the past, uh, there have been more bulk pickups. Is that correct? Mm, well, not in the recent past, no. It's been quite a few years since there's been more. Sure. And is it possible for residents to uh, get bulk, bulk items picked up um, in not in October? I mean, I do some spring cleaning myself. Uh, so sometimes yep. I have a big you can item. call and request one. You can call and request it from Willimantic Waste for thirty-two dollars. Thirty-two dollars. So that's not that's not something that mm -hmm. the town provides that service for me. I, I have to pay for it by myself. Correct. Excellent. Um, and I I have some questions about the conditions of the roads in town. Um, I, I live on uh, a road that was uh, resurfaced uh, last year, but I, you know, I walk around uh, my neighborhood a lot and there are certainly a number of roads that I've noticed that are in um, deteriorating uh, conditions. Um, is road uh, repair included in this budget? Yes, and if you have specific questions about the roads, you can send them into the town manager and he can get them over to the DPW. Okay, um, does this budget address uh, the maintenance of our roads so we don't have to pay what I understand to be a little bit more uh, to resurface if, if the roads aren't properly maintained? Um, does this budget address appropriate maintenance for all of our roads, our public roads in town? Yes, it does. If you look back through the, the capital plan and also there is online, there is a um, plan for road resurfacing and the schedule for when all maintenance will be done. Okay, thank you for that. That's very informative. Um, in terms of uh, services for uh, seniors in town, can, can you point me in the direction to find some information about the services this budget covers for seniors in our town? If you look in the budget, there's a section on the senior center. You can review it there. So the only services that are offered to our seniors are regarding the senior center? The senior center coordinates them or you can speak to Bev and human relations. But Katie, I know what you're doing. You know all of this. You're free to ask it, but it, this is all stuff that is fairly easily accessible and known. 
Oh, I, are we going to have to go through every single department? Is that what we're going to do? Oh, I appreciate that um, that we have this meeting. I, I understand this meeting is required by our town charter, and I think one of the most beneficial parts of this meeting is uh, public input. Um, so I, I do greatly appreciate that we have this opportunity um, and they, that you are available um, to answer questions. Um, I, since we weren't able to really articulate what the needs of the community are, um, I did have some questions about some of the items that I personally think are needs for our community um, in regards to this budget. So I do greatly appreciate that I have this opportunity to ask them. Thank you very much for that. Um, Madam, Madam wondering... Chair, if I may make a point of order, I mean, even though this is a uh, public hearing and this is a town council meeting at this point, you are presenting the budget, but generally we have a two minute limit on public participation at this point. Uh, at, point at this point, we are well over that. Uh, and I, I think that this is something that needs to be addressed. Uh, since this is a public participation and public participation is generally limited to two minutes. The agenda does not specify that, Councillor Luba. Uh, the agenda just specifies that this is an opportunity for public input. I, um, I don't know that it's on what's on the... Um, we'd be also cognizant of the fact that the budget is already completed. And any opportunity through multiple uh, multiple public hearings to talk about what is or is not in the budget or wanted to be in the budget. Um, if the budget fails, then we can have another public hearing to talk about what can or cannot be put in there. But the budget can't be changed now. So it is just presentation of the budget as it is. Yes, excellent. Um, I get, as I said earlier, um, this meeting is required by our charter, I believe. And I greatly appreciate that the council members are willing to listen to public input at this time. And I thank you for that opportunity. Um, I had a, a Board of Ed related question. Um, as you said, uh, this, this budget does meet our community needs. One of the things Dr. Willett talks about with uh, that, that's that as a parent, I find uh, very important is about the social and emotional health of our children and how in the past year now, um, there have been uh, increased concerns about the social and emotional health of our children. Um, and the original budget that was unanimously approved by the Board of Ed and then rejected by this council in your wisdom, um, while it doesn't directly cut anything, it certainly tightens the belt um, in the Board of Ed. Um, and I am wondering if the focus on social and emotional health of our children will receive the same level of focus as it would have if the council had been, um, in their wisdom, uh, accepted the original budget uh, that was unanimously approved by the board. Actually, it expands the, the belt of their budget by 2%. So, and it has all of the positions that they asked for still being able to be attained with the numbers that are in here. It also has all of the programs that they asked for based on usage of the million dollars that is left at the end of this year to pre-purchase items. So um, if there is a need that is not being met, I would encourage you to bring that back to the Board of Ed who has cognizance over how their budget is spent. Excellent. How much of this budget is um, dedicated towards prepaying for things? Um, you can contact the finance area to ask them exactly what they're doing with that. Um, we don't have purview to the day-to-day -day spending of either board. You, you said there was, um, in your summary, you said that there was part of this budget was being used to prepay for things. Um, maybe uh, town manager yes, Rosen knows the answer. Uh, I can tell um, you that this we... is not his meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is I'm not sorry. his meeting, and um, he can. Uh, this is my presentation of the budget, so I encourage you to send an email to the town manager, and he can get that to the um, finance first, Lisa, and they can help you with a list of what they're planning to do. 
Okay, I will do that. Um, how, from a policy perspective, will um, is the town council planning on accounting for prepayment in future budgets? The town council does not handle the day-to-day -day budget. So I'm not sure I understand what you're trying to get at. Okay, um, I'll, I'll explain myself a little bit further. Um, when we prepay for things like, you know, if this year's budget prepays for some items out of next year, um, that reduces the need, the costs next year, but eventually we're going to catch up, right? You know, eventually we're going to have a year where we can't prepay for things. Um, and from a policy perspective, I'm wondering how the council is planning on handling um, policy, the policy of prepayment. And once that catches up, what are we going to do? Well, we'll handle that when it comes up, but the intent is that you prepay with money that you've already taken from people from a tax perspective and use that. So when it catches up, as you put it, it would become an item in the budget um, for consideration to be added back in. Right. Okay. I think those were all my questions. I do greatly, as I said, appreciate your time. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, Sophia. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Um, I, again, I, you'll probably hear me repeat this until I'm blue in the face with regard to my appreciation for the astute management of our recent budget. Um, again, I'm Sophia Johnson from 48 Crystal Lake Road. Um, not so much a new resident anymore. I'm going to stop saying that. I think I wore that <laughs> one out. But I, 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 when I came into town, the first thing that I did was um, go to the library. And my second was to go to the town manager's office to try to obtain a copy, a paper copy of the budget. And I understood that it was 50 cents per page. So I had to find a digital copy and I went through it as best as I can with the limited amount of time before the first, I think I'm referring to them as budget hearings where they're actually budget workshops where the budget is presented and then there's um, the, the, the council members, their, your duty, I just wanna make sure I understand this. Your duty is to review that budget and in consideration of not over inflating expenditures or keeping things tight so that residents don't have to see a high tax increase, you make adjustments that will not, um, as you said tonight, do not compromise services. Um, I can say that with um, recovery from the winter, I'm very huge with public works and what recovery is like after the winter. I, the roads were immaculate. The roads were well done and they were salted and the snow was removed as fast as I've ever seen it. Um, the, when it comes to the roads there, I've, I've been spending a lot of my time driving as much mileage in Tallinn while I said again, while the trees are low so that you can see all of the beautiful architecture and everything else. And I don't remember encountering any you know, terrible roads, but um, I don't know if there's an access, if there's bad roads that people can email them and then they can be discussed later on with getting those roads repaired. I don't know, I didn't really see if there were any kinds of grants that were allocated from the state in order or through um, any kind of um, um, community development um, type of um, organization that will allow for you to get funds in order to fix a minimum amount of roads per year. But I personally did not encounter I would say a bad road in all of Connecticut. Like Connecticut is, seems to be very on top of the infrastructure with regards to roads. Whereas in New York where I'm from, you, the potholes were like, you know, it was part of, it was a part of life. Potholes for New York has always been a part of, part of life. So maybe my standards aren't as high as um, other Tallinn residents, but I do know that for being a person that wants to have decent roads, wants to have snow removal done, I can say that I'm, I'm pleased with where we're at and the fact that you said that we're not going to be losing any money that would com compromise services. That has me rest assured that our me needs will be met. 
with understanding the how the budget process works again the only thing that i know that i we did differently was that there were budget workshops where people would be able to participate when each budget is presented so when um, um town manager rosen went through the first workshop meetings and the line by line um, we didn't have an opportunity to scrutinize a line by line unless we came around back at the ending and then you know jotted things down or got a copy of the budget and addressed our concerns then but I can say that for the without seeing an impact with the quality of life, I would be able to only give my opinion next year after this fiscal budget ends with regards to what may have impacted my needs as a resident. Um, as a student, I will only have one student in the school and I have other questions there, but I will take that up with the school district as they are the ones that manage the day to day. Day to day. Um, um, business. Um, again, I'm just saying that with, um, I've made an, an effort to intend tonight, but I didn't find the, the slides from the workshops. So that would be the only thing like for the um, presentation. I was trying to see if the budget presentation was available to review after. And just, just to make a note that I realized that the budget meetings are, all of the town council meetings are on television maybe for the people that think that it's restricted to Zoom, maybe a blast can go out on a town Facebook page to just let people know that they can get access on YouTube and they can get access through the television for whatever time that those slots are so that people can be engaged and be able to review the budget before making, you know, doing the vote. And again, Nassau County is one of the highest taxed counties in America. And coming from a place where I was paying $15,000 a year, to just under 7,000 a year. I understand that with the way that Board of Education budgets work, especially in Nassau County, it was the same thing, that the scrutinizing of it is important that we don't have an excess reserve, that we're using the money that is there, just things like that. So again, I'm, I'm happy, I'm pleased. I Like I said, I come from a place where things were far worse. So I'm very grateful for the direction that things are going in now. And I appreciate your, your way of scrutinizing the budget and ensuring that taxes are kept at a minimum because where I came from, we had five years, zero tax increase. And that coming here and seeing that there's a 2% tax increase from what it was before, I can still say that I'm happy because it's not $15,000. So again, thank you for your time and um, good luck with being able to keep things in budget for the oncoming fiscal year. Thank you. Um, Colleen. Hi, good evening, Colleen Udachuk, 12 Blueberry Hill. Um, I won't take too much of your time. I just want to thank all the departments and the counselors and Board of Education for all their hard work and putting this um, budget together. It's not definitely not an easy process. My question really is um, how, now that the process, this part of the process is over, how will the counselors support the budget outside of, I guess you want to say the Zoom chambers, I'm not sure what you'd call it, but how would you support it? I like that, Colleen, Zoom I chambers, I like that. I'm just winging it <laughs> I, I, You know? <laughs> I own those rights now, no, just kidding, but anyways. Exactly, right? <laughs> you need to put that little C in there, the Zoom chamber. <laughs> Um, but I guess my question is, how will you show support outside of this, you know, if that makes sense, if my question makes sense. But that was really it. Um, thank you for, again, for all you guys do. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. Um, I can't speak for all the other counselors, uh, but I try to put out as much information as I can so people can make an educated um, decision on the budget. And um, I believe that it's it's up to each individual to make that decision based on their own personal needs. So that's what I do. That's what I will continue to do um, and answer questions if people have them regarding how we got to where we are. So hopefully that helps. Um, Liz Costa. Hi, Liz Costa, 54 Josiah Lane. Um, I am concerned about the plethora of prepayments we've done this year and last year actually and how it hasn't necessarily kept up. Um, I'm asking that you create a list or that Lisa creates a list of all the prepayments done at the town level 
and then uh, Mike or Dr. Willett creates a list of all the ones that were prepaid at, on the Board of Ed level, because I think the town needs to know that in order to create a budget for 22-23 that is representative of our needs. Um, so I'm asking that you all do that. And secondly, by counselor, I'd love to hear that you are going out, you're going to support this budget and I'm hoping you will. So I'm hoping to hear by counselor if you will go out and support this budget. Um, we, this is not a meeting for all the counselors to speak yet. So um, I'd rather not do a, a round table ask on that one. Um, it's just my presentation. So uh, as far as the um, prepayments, if uh, Dr. Willett is not on this call. So if you could send an email to everybody that um, on both sides, Dr. Willett and Mike, then we can get that list for you. I think you're allowed to ask Mike for it though, right? Well, um, yeah, but an email would probably be easier if you wanna send an email to both parties, then they can, Mike's on the call, so he can hear it. And I believe Lisa's also on the call, so she'll know that it's coming, but then you can also get Dr. Willett in the email also. I'm, but I'm asking you as the, the town council chair to create a list as part of this budget process so we know what was prepaid. So that's how I'm doing it. I mean, I'm asking in a public forum so the public can know. Me just getting a list personally doesn't help the entire town. So it's, I'm just asking as a town. And um, Well, so you want us to present it in a meeting? Is that what you're asking for? I'm asking you to put it in, in the details of this budget, what was prepaid. The budget is already complete though. And the budget books are already complete. So it, we can't add, a, and we don't have that entire list yet, Liz. Um, honestly, it's gonna depend on the money that's left and what items can be purchased. I know the Board of Ed goes through theirs in a meeting. They have all of that. It was in their last meeting actually. Um, and that will be updated over the next couple of months from what I understand. Uh, and on the town side, it's going to be dependent on the money that doesn't get spent out of the expenses and what items they can take through. So it's not gonna, um, there's, not a, there's not a stagnant list as of today. It will continue to morph and change until the end of the fiscal year. Then so I think if we have it. Mike and, um, well, I think if we have something from Mike and Walt, um, Dr. Willett, then we can have that list available somewhere. I'll, I'll talk to Mike to see where we can gather that information on the town side. And then we have the Board of Ed meetings for the um, Board of Ed side. Thank you, I appreciate you doing that. No problem. Um, Deb? I'm assuming that's Deb Getz, just says Deb. Maybe it's not Deb Getz, Deb? Also, just a heads up, Deb, if it's Deb Getz or not, your uh, audio isn't working if you're muted or. She lost her connection. She... <laughs> she got, wait a second or, excuse me, wait a second or two. I'm fine waiting another couple moments if they're able to reconnect or if they're attempting to. Uh, I don't see that it says connecting, but nope, hand it down. All right, uh, anybody else? All right, not seeing anybody else, then I will adjourn this meeting at 7.49. Thank you all for coming. And if you have any other questions, um, please feel free to email them to towncouncil at talon.org um, and we can help get answers. Thank you and have a good night.